Hello everyone, it's Dr. Charlie. We are coming to you live again. Um, trying to do this at least two or three times a week to give you guys some great information about you know, different health related um, topics that we've been dealing with here, either in the clinic or we actually get online. And again, you can um, join our Healing Blends uh, Cell group it's by um, applying for it. We will gladly have you in there. Today, I'm going to give you four quick topics on how to reduce your stress as well as reduce your uh, risk of getting high um, um, diabetes or um, how to prevent um, your diabetes um, getting worse as well. Now, let's go ahead and explain the whole connection here. Uh, stress and diabetes almost go hand in hand. It shows that um, individuals that are in high stress situations such as jobs or um, uh, uh, being a caregiver, things of that sort, are in high stress situations and you are actually at 45% more of a uh, situation, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, at a risk of getting actual um, diabetes just by the, the fact that you have a higher cortisone levels and also different stressors inside of your life as well. Research shows, again, 45% more of at a risk of having, you know, um, diabetes. And that's just from you being in a stressful situation. Um, I had a few patients today, actually, um, there are caregivers of individuals with chronic diseases and they came to me and said, yeah, I actually do have diabetes, um, type 2 diabetes, because of the fact that, you know, they don't know why. But I'll tell you several reasons why the person could have diabetes. One, of course, like I said, the cortisone levels actually increase your risk of using your insulin. Because, again, cortisone works off how, how your body uses the glucose in your body or sugar in your body. So, you just keep your body going in that flight or fight situation. Held in a flight or flight situation too long, what will happen is the body will either burn it out or require you to actually have more glucose in your system. That usually leads to bad choices um, in food, meaning high sugar um, drinks, high sugar uh, um, snacks, high sugar meals, high carb meals, high protein meals, things of that sort. And I say high protein because, again, not having too much protein in your system is that can, can actually be, be a bad thing if you're not balancing out with enough hydration, things of that sort. I find a lot of these individuals are um, in high stress situations. You know, most of them actually, yes, they are over, definitely overweight and they have horrible um, dietary choices. One, re one reason why we constantly are giving individuals um, uh, different dietary uh, roles, either in the office or actually online as well. So you definitely go to healingblitzglobal.com. We have a lot of different recipes that we're putting out. You set up our emails. We have a lot of different recipes we actually are um, giving to you. We just put out another ebook. Um, for diabetes and things of that sort. So, you know, thank you guys for joining in and give me a thumbs up or a heart or a smiley face, whatever you want to give me so I can know that you guys are being active. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to actually ask again. Again, another reason why a person may actually have um, uh, diabetes risk is because of the fact that they also may be depressed. It also shows that individuals that actually are depressed are actually at a 45, I'm sorry, excuse me, the wrong figure, is the actually highest 58% um, risk of, of actually have diabetes. And um, people that are actually insulin dependent is a little bit more higher, it's around 60 some percent at a risk for being not depressed. Again, taking your body back into that cycle of being dependent on insulin because your body is trying to make bad choices because you're actually craving something from a physical pain or actual is a, a emotional pain as well. So again, you got to be very, very careful at what you actually are putting inside your body as well. It actually shows that people that tend to have a more depressed type state actually are 20% more um, active in having uh, at risk of having diabetes too. So once again, you see that stress can do so many different things to the body. That's why we, we in medicine call it the most idiopathic um, disease that we actually have because we don't know how it's going to affect your body. All we know is once you're in a stress situation, that different things in your body start to really happen. So like I said, I'm going to give you four ways to actually help combat that. And, and the main thing that I tell everyone is the reason why I keep bringing up the whole diet and everything. You can, you know... I will almost want to congratulate people on having diabetes. It's kind of silly, silly to say that, but I'm like, you actually are in control of type 2 diabetes for the most part. About 90% of people with type 2 diabetes, it can be avoided through your diet and exercise. So that's why I say you're now in control of this disease. So you start it, you can actually finish it. Okay. So let's start with the diet. Definitely, you know, none of the sugary drinks and none of the, uh, of the sugary um, foods and high uh, carbonated foods and, and, and really just stay away from packaged foods for, for the most part. You know, um, again, like I said, on our on our website, we actually do have 
um, a lot of great recipes. We put out an ebook. We sign up for for our newsletters and our emails, things like that. So we send all these things over there to you. We have people who have great responses to it as well. The second is definitely you want to definitely stay hydrated. Hydration means is hydration means. You know, I always get uh, conflicting things um, with patients that say, well, you know, I drink a gallon of water a day. I say, well, how often do you work out? I say, well, I don't really work out. I'm like, well, in general, we want to say how much you year and out you want to put back in. In general, I'll say around 40 ounces, maybe around 55 ounces of water a day you should be having. And if you're not sweating a whole lot, and you're not working out. If you're working out, definitely you want to replenish yourself. But when you replenish yourself, you want to make sure you have good electrolytes inside the water as well. Um, you can have the lemon. You can have the um, the ginger. You can have um, what else? You can have uh, mint inside there. Um, different fruits you can have inside there. That's going to give you the good trace minerals. But you also want to make sure that you're getting a good quality water, uh, filtered water. You know, a good filter for, from your tap, um, and or you can buy um, water as well. And the controversy lies here. I'm not a plastic guy, meaning I don't like to have anything in plastic. So I prefer um, things in bottles. Or like I said, you can filter the water yourself. I have a great system that I have here, have here in my office as well as home. It's one of the few uh, um, systems that get rid of all the trace minerals inside the water as well as fluoride. And the system is called um, Adia, A-D-Y-A, um, Adia Water. It's actually a company out of Canada that has some great products. And it's, it's a pretty cheap um, um, system to actually have to do all of that. But um, again, I'm getting into things that's going to actually help enhance your life, not take away from your life as well. Again, so when you're eating, I'm just recap really quick. When you're eating, make sure that you're eating small meals. Forgot to say that part. You want to have at least four to five different meals a day. Now, when I say a meal, I'm not saying sit down and eat. A meal is a snack. A meal is a few um, carrot sticks or celery sticks or an apple or an orange or grapes, whatever. You just want to keep things in your system. And you know, people always uh, make fun of me because I really don't eat a lot. Of, I don't even sit down and eat lunch. It's only rare if I do that. But I make sure I have dried fruit, I have nuts, I have raw nuts, and I have a lot of fruit in my refrigerator. I have a refrigerator inside of my office that I have food there. So I'm not starving myself. What I'm doing is I'm just grazing all day long. So when I get home, I have a decent snack, I'm a decent, decent meal, and I'm not overeating. Um, that's the main thing. You don't want to overeat um, as well. You sort of want to eat until you feel satiated, not full. Satiated, not full. Okay, so everyone write that right now and back to me so you guys understand um, what I'm saying. Satiated, not full. Because once we start to overeat, that's another inflammation, uh, inflammation uh, uh, situation that your body has to go through. It takes harder to break down the food and things like that. So, so again, be mindful of what you're putting inside your body. Healthy snacks, healthy uh, meal choices, as well as healthy things to drink. You can have fruit juices. There are not... Uh, uh, full of sugar. You can, you know, juice it yourself or, uh, or uh, uh, a company called Suja, S-U-J-A. I believe in their product a whole lot because they're one of the first uh, products that actually was cold pressed, organic, non-GMO. It was just what it said in there. It was no added anything inside there. They used to use a lot of lemon and a lot of ginger, a lot of things that help preserve it. It stayed in the refrigerator and within like uh, 10 days, it was off their shelf or even less than that. It's a very, very good product. S-U-J-A. Or if you um, need a good um, Vitalite, um, is a very good electrolyte replacement. Um, v i t a l y t um, t e dot com. You can go there. They have a lot of great electrolyte replacements that I do believe in. They're um, all natural. Uh, it's based in glucose, which it will not increase a type two diabetic. So again, my, my father in law, and other people that I know that I put on this, it does not affect their insulin um, at all or, or their blood sugar levels. I'm not saying drink it all day long, but just drink about eight ounces of it a day just to get the all the electrolytes you need in your system to make it function better. Or lemon, lime, and water will also work as well. Sleep. How many of you guys really get the adequate amount of sleep you're supposed to have in a night? And then when you get it, is it quality sleep? How many times a night are you waking up? Are you really get to a really good deep REM sleep? Sleep is very, very important. In fact, um, that's when I actually take my vitamins. I take my vitamins, if I'm, and I don't take vitamins, I, I'll back it up. I actually take um, my own supplements or I take um, my own herbs. So I take um, something that is a multi-herbal, that's a multivitamin type thing. Um, and I take my zinc and I take, um, I drink my juice at night as well as I do take, um, I do my powder um, even flow 
uh, myself as well, but I do all my stuff mostly at night. And the reason why, when I'm lying there asleep, I'm not able to sweat it out. I'm not able to really urinate it out. So my body is going to use all those nutrients while I'm lying there. And actually, I do sleep a lot better. I find myself when I stretch at night, it's the main thing you want to do. Before you get in bed, do a nice five-minute stretch. You find aches and pains go away. If I stretch, uh, after I take my vitamins, whatever, lie in bed, I pray, go to sleep, and I sleep very, very well every night. Some nights, yes, I don't get a lot of sleep because uh, that's just who I am. I got to put these programs together, things that sort. But most nights, I sleep, I say 99% of the time, I sleep very, very well. But how many of you guys are doing that? How many of you guys are getting the six to eight hours of sleep that's required for your body to really repair? What starts to happen is the sleep apnea. What starts to happen is you wake up craving the caffeine or something to get going. And as for the actually doing more damage to your adrenal glands, which produces the extra cortisol in your system, so your body goes back into that loop once again. So you have to make sure um, that you're getting adequate amounts of sleep in order for your body to actually heal itself. Sleep is designed to really only do one thing. Have your body rest and actually repair any damage you've done during the day. So another reason why I say take your vitamins at night, um, it will actually help your body repair itself a lot more efficient, especially if you're taking lots of antioxidants. It will definitely do that a whole lot. And the last thing I always tell people, you have to take your rest periods during the day. You know, you got to make sure that you're taking a break from your daily routine at least three to four times a day. I know some individuals don't have that luxury to be able to have um, you know, breaks at work. But again, staying up at your desk, stretching, or just walking to the bathroom, you know, things of that sort is a way for you to get a break from your normal routine and actually have your body rest and as well as your mind. Again, if stress is one of the most idiopathic conditions out there and you're we're creating so much stress inside of our body, main thing you, main thing you want to do is de-stress as many times as you can throughout the day. Deep breaths, three, three, three deep breaths will actually help, and it's been shown to actually alleviate a lot of cortisol responses in our body. So it's basically three long deep breaths that you actually are expanding your chest open and just release and re release slow. That's been shown through countless numerous studies. You can actually look it up: deep breathing um, technique for techniques for relaxation and how it actually has improved someone's stress levels throughout the day. Do that two or three times a day, you'll see that your body naturally is going to start to relax. Thus, you have a more clear-minded thing, and your body is not going to respond so uh, heavily to all the stressors that are around you. As a caregiver or as you know, um, a parent with a, a child that has chronic disease, you want to make sure that you're as healthy as you can so you can have that longevity with that child. If you are an individual with that chronic disease, Unfortunately, um, you're more apt to have an exacerbation of your chronic disease if you don't have these proper things in order. Again, sleep, rest, diet, and hydration are critical for anyone to have proper health. Now, if you have a chronic disease, you got to make sure that you're even more apt to do that. It, it saddens me when I see individuals with chronic diseases. You know, I, I'll see some of you guys post on, on, on your own feed, but some of the things that you eat and drink, and I'm like, well, you just said you were in the hospital, you know, last week, and all of a sudden you're back out eating things you're not supposed to eat, drinking things you're not, not supposed to be drinking, things of that sort, and and you're asking why certain medications are not working. It's not working because you, you still say you're feeding your body inflammation and also pain triggers as well. You got to make sure that you're doing your part as well for yourself. No one's going to do it. That's why I'm trying to guide you and give you some worth and value to your own life to make sure that you're going to do these things. And if you need the help, that's why we're doing these seminars. That's why we, we're doing these Facebook Lives and we're posting all these different things um, on our site because of the fact that, you know, we want to make sure that we're adding value to your life. That you can say, hey, look, I have this piece of paper that's a checklist of everything I need to get done. Yes, we, we, I'm going to start adding some things into the, um, the Facebook uh, posts as well. Um, there's be different checklists that you can print off and say, when I go to the store, I can eat this, this, and this. Or um, before I go to bed, I can I have to do this, this, and this. There'd be different checklists. I mean, there are like at least 30 different um, spices and, 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 and things like that you should be using on a daily basis um, or a weekly basis just putting in your food. If you add an extra bit of ginger to your food, do you know how well that's going to repair your stomach? If you add some turmeric, to your, your food. Do you know how well that's going to do for the inflammation inside your body if you do that on a daily basis? You know, rosemary. Rosemary has is, is, is been proven if you eat enough rosemary, 
Rosemary is going to actually help the brain function a lot better. You can think better. You can think more clear. You know, so these are just simple things that we will start putting out for you guys. So you will understand that it is very, very easy to be healthy. Is that a mystery? It's something that if you seek, you will find. And we're trying to find, give you the information to um, all in one place. So um, we'll keep doing these videos over and over again. And the ones who came in late, Thank you. Give me a big thumbs up or uh, or any questions you guys have, please ask them. I keep saying it over and over again. You guys have been giving some phenomenal, phenomenal questions um, too. It's making us you know, really think and also making sure that we're getting good information that we can give to you guys. And again, adding quality to your life over and over again. Once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Love you and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. God bless.